tonight. A country rock. Entire villages swept away. My wife, my son's family, and four grandchildren. I lost them all. Now, an even more catastrophic nuclear threat. It's a very frightening situation. We can only hope for the best. From a company with a history of problems. And just as you think you might have gotten control of one, then another one goes. Up next, Japan, when disaster struck. And we're getting a much better idea tonight about the status of all six nuclear reactors at the Fukushima power plant, John. Right now, fresh water is flowing to most of them, replacing the seawater that's been used during the past two weeks. Two of the reactors, five and six, are now considered safe. The other four are all believed to have suffered some kind of damage to their reactor cores. For now, they're said to be stable. Mm -hmm. But the nuclear crisis, far from over. Let's get right to CNN's Martin Savage, who is on the phone for us in Tokyo. Bring us up to date, Martin. Well, Don, right now, as you point out, that fresh water is key here because what has happened over the past couple of days, we've been pouring tons and tons of salt water. Salt water desperately needed to keep those reactors cool. As you know, salt water is highly corrosive, and especially in the heated environment, it clogs up all sorts of things that actually can't be clogged if you're trying to run and cool a nuclear power plant. So bring in the fresh water, flush everything out, especially flush out those crucial pumps. Then hopefully you stand a chance of being able to turn those on. I know we've been saying this for over a week. When are they going to turn them on? When are they going to turn them on? Well, they've been severely damaged. They're trying to replace the parts, but those really are key here, and the company is trying to get that right. Another concern, high levels of radiation that have shown up in the seawater right off the coast there. I'm talking thousands of times of what they should be. The government is saying, look, here, that's radioactive iodine, so really it's going to have a half-life of about eight days. They do not expect it to have any impact on people, and they, have it, they expect it to have a minimal effect on sea life there. But still, uh, you've got to wonder, where is it coming from? And that's the real question, Doc. Where are these leaks coming from? Are they coming from some sort of breach in the core of the reactors? Or are they coming, say, from those fuel pools that may be overflowing and leaching radiation? Either way, it's not a good thing at all, Doug. And Marty, uh, Prime Minister Nehru Khan says there's still a long way from the point of this crisis being resolved. They seem to have stabilized the situation, but is there a time frame now when they think that this crisis may start to come to an end? No, there isn't. And that's the thing I think that shocked us a bit about that statement was, first of all, how grim the assessment was were for circumstances out there at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Uh, after two weeks, you would expect that uh, you'd start to hear some sort of optimistic talk. It was anything but that. In fact, he almost implied that, you know what, the worst may not be over just yet. Still, they are stabilizing. But what you find out is that just trying to keep things where they are is a desperate battle. And they've had a number of major setbacks. You have the three employees that were exposed to radiation, and that appears to have been a simple oversight. They did not really check the radiation levels in the environment in which these men were working. They didn't appear to have the proper safety equipment to be wearing, and this raises the issue of, well, just how lax are the safety measures here of a company that's dealing with a major nuclear disaster? And Marty, the spokesman for the plant, says this hazard could have been avoided if the contaminated water had just been tested days earlier when it was first discovered. Yeah, I, I hate to say it's a no-brainer, and I'm not in the nuclear industry, but yes, that does seem like something that you would do, especially when you're going to be sending people, your employees, into that environment there. They were apparently standing in water that was 10,000 times normal levels of radiation, wearing something like galoshes or boots, splashing around in it for 45 minutes. And even though their radiation alert system that they had, the little device they were was going off, they thought it was a false alarm. So again, this goes back to what kind of training, what are you instilling in your employees, and do they even know for their own safety how to operate? And Marty, when they encourage people to, uh, to leave the area, they've expanded that evacuation area where they say that, that you know, if you can leave, you should. There's been some criticism right. though, that that leaves behind people who don't have the means to get out, or they may be elderly. Is there any word on what they may be doing for those people who are left behind? Yes, this has been kind of a quiet expansion of the evacuation system. Initially, it was uh, 20 kilometers or about 12 miles. They said anybody another 10 uh, kilometers beyond that, they could stay, but you have to stay indoors. Well, they quickly figured out that, you know what, that's a problem, because if people have to stay indoors, they don't, don't go to the grocery store, they aren't buying the things they need. So they're trapped, and that left the government trying to supply these people in their homes, and we're talking maybe 70,000 people. That 
became too big a chore, so the government finally said, you know what, it's probably wise you all just leave. But just like in the U.S. when you have a hurricane, you cannot force people out. There's no law for that. So they tell people, they strongly advise them, they tell them, you better register at City Hall if you're going to stay. But if they decide to stay, it's a problem for the government. They, they can't really force it, aren't you? Yeah, there's also a problem of where all of these people go. Yeah. Marty Savage for us on, mm -hmm. on the phone from uh, Tokyo. Thank you, Marty. And we should tell you the CNN is launching a new high-tech way for smart